Greetings, comic friends. We're celebrating another week of comics with TGIW. Thank God it is Wednesday. Looking at what we picked up this week for new comic book day. Now, I'm a little light. Uh, I have a total of seven books, but it should have been ten. One of my shops, uh, UPS, lost a couple of boxes. And that had all their image stuff in it. So I should have also gotten Saga, Junkyard Joe, and Noctera, I think, were the three that I ended up missing. But they should be there for me when I go in this next upcoming Wednesday. But that's okay. I had a lot of stuff going on. Getting through these seven books was, uh, was enough without putting three more on top of it. Hopefully next week uh, is, is light, so those three books being on there won't won't uh, be be too much for me but uh, I am sad that I didn't get those because I, I, junkyard Joe in particular is just a fantastic fantastic book and Noctera is is kind of wrapping up so I'd really like to see where that's going <clears throat> saga uh, saga probably would have been I'm guessing would have been the weakest book in in the lot in, including what uh, what I got here but won't know until I get it and read it I guess so speaking, speaking of strong books, Daredevil number 11. Wow. Um, wow. This puts a nice little cap on this last story. And I, I really, really can't say anything <laughs> without giving it away. But there were certainly uh, a handful of wow moments. Like, Matt, <laughs> you're not okay. <laughs> very, very good, man. I, I, I just, I want Zdarsky to write everything. Can Zdarsky just write everything? Can we, can we do that? Batman White Knight presents Generation Joker. So, this, this was also very good. I love the White Knight stuff. And this. We learn that the, the drive that stores the Joker, the, or the, I should say the, the Jack Napier mind, is um, losing power. That cannot be recharged or whatever for MacGuffin reasons. So he's basically, it's, he's, basically he's, he's, he's dying. This, this AI version of Jack Napier is dying. And he wants to use this time to spend it with his kids. Um, that, I mean, that's that's pretty much all I, I probably need to say with without going into too much detail. But that's probably enough. That's that's what this story is is about. It was it was very it was very good. This got carried over from the last volume, uh, Silk Number One. I wasn't planning on getting this, but it was in my poll because I had the last volume. So I was like, you know what? It's in there. I'll pick it up. I did enjoy the last volume. I like Silk. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I'm very curious about it. It's it's definitely a mystery, where she seems to be kind of jumping around, either time or universes or both but there's something obviously going on you get a little bit of a hint of, of maybe uh, of what it is but not really what's going on at, at the end so i think i'll probably stick with it i was kind of intrigued enough to to want to learn what's going on in that one amazing spider-man number 25 Okay, so, so so this is this basically this entire issue is Mary Jane's life when she was in that alternate New York where time moved slower. The story of her and her husband. Did they get married? I don't remember. I don't know if they were married or not, but her and her significant other and um, their kids 
and it, it's 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 that story like what happened during that time um it's important information i suppose if this is the world we have to live in the the world in which this existed <laughs> this happened we needed to know and this fills in the gaps does it make anything better no, I don't think it really changes a whole lot. I mean, there there are some there's some stuff revealed that that you that we didn't know, and I'll I'll feel more comfortable talking about it next week. So um, when you know I can kind of talk about things that happen in this issue or next next issue, I'll talk about things that happen in this issue probably, but I don't want to give it away for now. Um, but it's, I don't know, it seems like one of those, the, the issue was necessary to learn what was going on, but it doesn't really change the state of things, I guess. Um, so, it, it was fine, it was interesting, and it, it just, it, it kind of had to happen. Ghost Rider 14, uh, here we get a lot of information about kind of what's going on with, with um, Danny Ketch, why he's wearing this helmet, why he's doing the things that he's doing and it is it is all for a reason um is is it the best reason uh i don't know but it's completely understandable uh, the people that he is working with have their own motives not that they're necessarily against danny but they definitely have priorities other than him uh, going on, but it is it is good to get a little bit of clarity on why Danny's acting the way he's acting, and it it makes sense. It makes sense, which is good. It's not just him, for whatever reason, being a jerk. Uh, Invincible Iron Man number six. This this is this is totally filler issue. Very little to do with the current arc. Maybe a little bit at the end. It is a it's a flashback to uh, a time around the West Coast Avengers. You can see he's in his Silver Centurion armor, which is my favorite Iron Man armor. So that was fun. But it's just a it's just a you know a, a flashback story that it gets kind of tied into things, but doesn't really do much. It's not bad. It's a it's a great story. It just doesn't add much to the, the current narrative. But that doesn't make it a bad comic. Right? It, was, it was still an interesting comic. And lastly, Joker... Uh, sorry, I was just reading it. Uh, Batman Incorporated, number eight. This I'm really excited for. So, Joker takes Batman's idea of outsourcing his name and motives across the world to create Joker Incorporated where he goes across the world and finds other like-minded ish individuals and sort of brands them as different variations of Joker. Um, I I'm actually with, with how long the concept of Batman Incorporated has been around. I'm surprised how long it's taken for this story to happen. It's it seems like a fairly obvious thing to do. Uh to, to have Joker like, aha, you're gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna do this. It's uh it's pretty good. And Joker Joker is there and he meets with uh Ghostmaker and you know he rubs it in his face like I know about your your promise not to kill. So uh yeah. I it's it's a very good idea. It's a long time coming so far, it seems to be executed well. I have no doubt that it will continue to be great. So that is all of them. So seven books total should have been ten, but a very, very solid week. Uh, the, the the weakest being Amazing Spider-Man, unfortunately, but and I, I think as fans, we would have been upset if we didn't get that story. So, and, and it is interesting. It's just... I don't know. It's overall disappointing, I suppose. But it's not the fault of this story. It's kind of the fault of the overall arc, which I guess you can still 
blame the writer for. <laughs> but anyway, um, really good week. Solid. Looking forward to reading the books that I missed this week, next week. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So let me know what you're reading this week. Like, comment, subscribe. And of course, don't forget to make yours Titan. This video was brought to you by Titan Comic Pressing. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Titan Comic Pressing LLC.